Hello, White Mentalism, and welcome back to Aurora 4X, where we have our incredibly and in frustratingly amazing space strategy game to get on with. So, we cleared out Davit previously, the system that had a whole load of precursor ships that caused a whole lot of trouble. We lost two Geo Survey ships in here in the end before we managed to deal with it. Our actual military didn't take any losses, but did need a lot of repairing. There were a lot of hits to armor, but space is now clear. We do have, however, two populations to deal with. One up here, which may or may not be defended, and one down here that has 4.6k ground units. Although I think 3.1 of that was surface-to-orbit weapons. So they're down to, what, like 1.5k? So not, not tiny, but something we can deal with. So having said that, we've just finished our actual geo survey. Let's see what we got. So there's a ruined colony here, which is what they were defending, with good minerals. Like, oof, that is actually really nice. The accessibility is a little bit low, but it's also, it's geosurveyable. Obviously, to geosurvey it with ground troops, we would need to land, and they don't like that. But it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, and then what we've got over here, destroyed outpost. Again, a whole load of minerals. And surveyable. Surveyable. Yeah, this place is really nice. Yeah, this place is quite nice. Not the most amazing. The accessibility in that star room is too low to worry about. Mm, that's okay. Not enough, really. Less than half a mil, but... Yeah. We, we're going to want to do something with this place. Especially because it's almost habitable in many different ways. Like, what do we need here? We need to up the amount of oxygen. Remove carbon dioxide. And then just drop the temperature a little bit. And then over here. Increase the oxygen. And that's it, actually. Just increase the oxygen. Yeah, this is definitely worth us dealing with. So to do that, obviously, we need to take the army in. Um, we're working on building the army right now. I've accelerated time a little bit in between episodes. We've gone about, I don't know, it's almost like half a year. So um, we, I think, have heavy bombardment. Are we working on that right now? We're working on heavy bombardment. But we can start working on our drop ships. Now, the drop ships are either going to be military or they're going to be civilian, obviously. Um... If we go over to shipyards, here's the issue. <sighs> I don't know where we can build them. Because we're going to want to build 25. And if we build them at a military base... The only places that are big enough are ones that are already building our capital ships, which obviously we don't really want to have to deal with that. If we build them a civilian place, they can't have stuff like shields. Which is a shame. That said, our shield tech is very early, so probably something we'll just have to deal with. You're retooling for the wolf car. You're building bigger so that you can have the poke. Which means that we'll probably want to take the 56 which is the colony ship one and use that for something else. A shame, but we can always retool it afterwards. And that's going to produce 25. Obviously, we don't need the full 25 to take this place. Probably just a fleet of five will do because that will drop 50,000 tons and they only have, what, 1.5k? So 50 to 1.5, we win easy. And regardless of how annoying their tech is. So... Let's start designing ourselves a ship. It's going to be civilian, because looking at that. Uh, so, new ship class. This is the Avindian, and this is going to be classed as an assault transport. Okay. First things first. What does it do? It transports troops. How does it do it? It uses a drop bay. The reason is a troop transport bay slowly sets people down on the ground like shuttles go down put them on the ground shuttles come up shuttles go down put them on the ground shuttles come up and it's load time is going to be how fast it does that like if we put on 
you know, 10,000 tons. It's going to take two days to do that. Ground combat fights every like eight hours, I believe. And so some of them are going to be on the ground getting attacked without support. It's, it, it's going to put them in a very awkward position and they're going to take a much more losses than they need to, which is why we have the drop choice. The drop bay large is just going to be able to unload instantly. Just does it. That's it. You go into orbit, you drop pod your entire group of people and you can leave. So we don't need to stay in orbit, which is great if they've got STOs and we need to just fly and drop our people and leave. If you stay in orbit and you're trying to do something, you're going to die. All we need to do is make orbit and leave. So drop bays are the way to go. Um, against the guys in Davit, we did deal with the STOs. We don't need it, but for future, this is going to be useful. We're also going to get ourselves a shuttle base so that we can pick troops up later. Only the one. Generally, if you're picking troops up, it doesn't matter how long you're taking unless you're pulling out from a system where you're losing the fight. If that is the case, then we probably want to go to like less than eight hours so that, you know, it's between the ticks of fighting so that they fight, eight hours go by, they fight, eight hours go by, oh, you left. As opposed to eight hours go by, oh, you're partially leaving and we attack you and you're not ready and you get massacred. Like, that's not good. Um, armor rating. It's an assault transport. If we're going in against enemies who have ground defenses, we will want to put some armor on this. So normally I'd say shields, but in this case, let's try for five armor. And then we're going to want to chuck on engines. Now, the engines on this are also going to need to be powerful because, again, if we get into the range of STOs, we want to spend as little time as possible in the range of those STOs. So we're going to put on... Yeah. It's a lot of engine. Uh, 56,000 tons. Okay. So we can easily fit inside here. We'll probably want to use distributed fuel storage. Because if we use one large and it gets holder in trouble. Um. Of the same range as the rest of the fleet. Just 30 billion. Go a little bit more. Six different fuel storages. Okay. It is commercial. But it is capable of actually going faster than the fleet, which is fine. You know, if anything, we want to go fast as possible, regardless. The idea being you get in, hit the planet, leave. Now, we could add a bit more armor. How high can we go with this armor? Without slowing down the fleet, eight. That's good. If we went to like one. Yeah, no. This will allow us to actually attack against STO fire. Eight armor is respectable. Like, our cruisers have, what, ten? You know? You've got eleven on the hardy. The Vash... Eleven. Okay, yeah. So, eight is two-thirds of actual, you know, cruiser destroyer armor we've got. And that's got quite a lot of armor on the destroyer. So, it does the job. It's going to be expensive. It's definitely going to put a hurt on our geranium supply. Which is the only thing I'm particularly concerned about with this. Uh, our armor tech is at a time, so it will remain good. Uh, range is fine. We've currently got the two shuttle bays. I think that's the right call, just in case we do need to pull out from somewhere. The build time's, you know, pretty expensive. If we were to have less armor, obviously the build time would drop. So, looking at three years build time on this. That's probably the right call. Yeah. Uh, we will add in a thermal sensor. Because if it's going to be going over enemy planets, they tend to go thermal signatures. That's how you spot STOs and so on. So we'll do that. Do we want to go for eight armor? Like, that might be a bit much. And obviously, it's going to cost more. Six. is probably the more sensible option. So we'll go with six. It brings the BP down a little bit. So we're less than two and a half thousand now. Bear in mind, two and a half thousand is a lot. Compare that with, say, the Hardy. 
which is almost six. So two of these assault transports, and we're planning to build 25, is a lot of build. Okay. Um, the only thing that's really going to change on this is that eventually we'll want to replace engines, we'll want to replace armor. But if we were to add shields, it would become a military craft. And that would change everything about it. So, yeah. Um, in terms of getting to targets, it will need someone to jump it because it doesn't have a jump drive. But fun fact, we're already working on someone who can jump this. Remember the poke maple? 30,000 tons, but with a jump drive that can move 61,000 tons. If Indian is under 50. So all we need to do is have a poke along with the Vindian, and we're good. Obviously, the poke will limit the speed. Um, but once we get in system, we can drop the poke and let the Vindian go in with the actual fleet. So not a problem. Uh, do we want to consider maybe just dropping the speed a little bit on the basis of it would save us a lot of build time? And it, it saves a lot of weight and build cost. I think we have to. I mean, I don't really want to, but... Um, we need to stay above 4,000. I don't think we want to go lower than that. But we save how many engines? We save only two. The extra speed will help us a little bit. But we're talking 10,000 ton of engine. I think we have to go with the cheaper one. The issue is, here's the thing, right? It's not, oh, well, it's cheaper. You just build more of them. Because each of these will have a ground unit inside it that we don't want to die. Because 50,000 tons of ground unit, well, 10,000 in each of these is it's a lot. Like, we don't really want to lose that. So the extra speed might be worth it. Al, you make the same argument for the armor. Um... Yeah, what if we drop the armor just a little bit? We'll go up with the armor just a little bit. Yeah, there's a sweet spot to be found. I think this is it. Keeping under 2,000 BP. And especially because this craft isn't going to change hugely. Eh, well, eventually we might want to actually change the engine out. Yeah. Well, this is a really hard decision. I know I'm back and forthing on it quite a lot. You know what? I don't want the ground units to die. Especially a headquarters ground unit. That would be really bad. We're going to go for the more expensive option. I know it might be a bit dubious, but I think this is the better option for us. Um, I will make this exactly 48,000 tons just because I know that there's some people out there who are a little bit OCD. And honestly, I can feel you on this. Like, making it a nice round number. There we go. And it also makes the speed exactly 5,000, which is what we're aiming for with our main fleet. Although that said, our main fleet, what's the exact speed of them? Uh, maybe that 29 is useful. We get that 29? No, we're never going to get that 29. Okay. We'll accept this. 48,000 tons. It's expensive. It's well armored. The only thing we'd ever want to really upgrade is maybe that sensor. Maybe. And those engines. Yeah. Okay, you're good. Um, you are 48,000 tons, capable of being built only at Charon International. So we are going to retool Live Indian. And that retool is going to take over a year. Oof. Oof. harsh and then obviously the building is going to take a while but fine um okay now bear in mind this is you know six uh five thousand ton engines so we're looking at thirty thousand ton of engine <laughs> that's why it weighs so much uh it's forty eight thousand tons ten thousand tons is drop troops thirty thousand ton is engine that's why it weighs a lot the issue with having a commercial vessel to do that job. That said, its fuel efficiency will actually be pretty nice. So that's an advantage. 
Uh, right. Well, when that's done, and when we start producing those, we can come back to Davit. Unfortunately, until that's done... Tell a lie. We could use our existing troop transport vessels to do that. Hmm. Yeah, you're on your way back now. We could have the honkers. It would only drop 10,000 tons, but there's not a huge enemy force there. We could clear this out. Where are the honkers produced? Hmm. Transport. Uh, your load time. Yeah, you'd be loading and you'd be attacked while you're unloading, which isn't great. I'd ideally want to replace your troop transports with um, drop bays, but because no one's tooled up for you, that would be difficult. It's something we'll consider. Um, one thing we can do to get the troop transports out quicker, obviously, is to build engines ahead of time. So we have six engines on each. We want to build 25. We're looking at 150 engines. And I've brought one of the honkers back because there's nowhere to do a survey on. Well, places in Davit, but I want to clear the place first. Uh, okay, let's go to our industry. I'm actually building 35 of these already. So, easy enough job. Let's push that up to 180. 36. 186. Modify that. Um, I've actually got 90% of the world working on that. I may have been like, you know what? Let's just do this so that we can get uh, some of our new craft ready. Obviously, the um, poke and the salvage craft, because I really want to salvage this stuff here. But maybe we have to slow that down a little bit. I don't know. Well, we'll keep going for now. We can probably ramp it down when it's produced enough for the first batch. So, you know, 50 or so. Okay, we got our squadron jump radius, and we're now working on Tokamak Fusion Reactor. That is the next tech of reactor that leads to the next tech of drive. Which is going to be amazing for us. It's going to take a long time though. Um, one thing worth checking on. Yeah, there's nothing else listed in power and propulsion afterwards. We should probably queue something up. Not that that's going to take... Oh, actually. You're only going to take three years. Damn. Okay. Hmm. I think we'll let you run out and then see what the cost is for the next tier of drive. Because obviously, next tier of drive will make us even more powerful or more efficient. Which is just a lot of really good options there. So I won't really want to queue anything up. Obviously, getting like a jump efficiency 8 is great. But also, you know, producing our fuel efficiency also good. So we'll let it, we'll let it run. You know what? We'll actually grab power for engine and tell a lie that down there just because that's going to benefit us for uh, missiles but also for maybe doing some like fast little ships that could maybe do boarding actions which would be pretty sweet oh hello where's this the Grosvenor Protector in Madman really that's quite close in that's right next to Lewis Terrestrial planet. Yeah, I guess I guess they've colonized this or something. Does this belong to them? We haven't heard them saying, hey, get out or anything. They seem to have quite a large, like, navy stage there. I'm going to start calling some of our grav survey ships back. Like, they're kind of okay now. We've 
done a lot of our surveying. We'll pull people back and start. I, it's not necessarily mothballing them, but it's kind of like, yeah, we're mothballing them for a while. We don't need them to go out for a little bit. The only thing I'd be tempted to do is maybe have a poke past Yabu. Wow, that's a lot of Kronin we found in Vastran. And that is... Last proper survey there. Okay, we've retooled for the Wolfka class. Downside is they use a lot of engines, and we're still working on making the engines. Um, we probably actually won't want to start building them just yet on the basis of... kind of want the engines. Uh, we'll need 30 of them. Actually, we probably have 30 engines, right? Yeah, we've just built more than 30. Okay. Yeah. Build Wolfkas. Uh, we won't put them into the battle fleet. I guess they'll go in cargo fleet for now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I didn't check use components. I hate that that's off by default. I don't understand why it should be off by default. Look at the speed at which they're building. Uh, we're going to delete task. Uh, new jump point in Vo. Oh, you actually have to take that because Vo is quite close. All right. Let's see what's through the jump point. I wonder if that's the jump point that goes to the Grosvenor Protectorate. Could be. No, it goes to... Bright. A lot of stuff here, actually. Oh, the binary is unfortunately like a really long way away. Is there a Lagrange point? One, two. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's Lagrange points, which means that we can actually travel from the inside to the outside quite easily. And unfortunately, it's been placed here because it's very confused and doesn't have anywhere to place it. Okay, uh, this is going to look awfully messy. I'm trying to figure out a better way to deal with this. Um... I don't think there is a better way to deal with this. So for now, we're going to place you here. At some point, we'll have to fix things. Okay, and there's a new jump point in Barathor, which is also going to do the same complaint. Oh. Oh, okay, that... Oh, that's frustrating. Uh, that went to Idril, which means that there's actually a uh, jump point in Idril we didn't know about. So that's a dormant jump point. We actually found the very first dormant jump point. Mm. Uh, oh, thank you. Idril again, there we go. Uh, that also makes it look like it goes to Nuke. So it doesn't. Let's fix this. You know, for now, I'm just going to put you here. At some point, I will fix this and make it look prettier. I realize at some point should just be now. But I don't want to. Okay, done. What's more worrying is that they stabilized the jump point to Idril. Uh, I don't like that. We need to claim Idril. Right now, it's not really claimed. Uh, we need to start dumping down populations, so... Yeah. Idril Moon 1. I don't know how we're going to do this because I believe we don't have any Jagnus 3. We really need more Jagnus being produced. Produce them quicker. 74 days is like the closest I think we've got. Yeah. These ones are 80% being done. Um, Right. Damn it. Okay. Um, we've got infrastructure available. A drill, a drill, a drill. The last thing we want to do is someone come along and claim the damn world as their own. A drill three, moon one. Yeah. Let's go to civilian economy. Request ourselves infrastructure. And we'll add a demand for like 10,000. Sure. Is 
this is all going to get messed up, by the way, when we look through the Yabu jump points. So, yeah. Also, we need to look through the Jedi jump points and maybe even the Dalek jump points now. Luckily, I believe we have some people just chilling around Earth. Hello. Uh, survey. Locations. Auto route to Yabu. Go through the unexplored jump point. Ah, right. I sent you to Tear. Oh, yes. And you can't go to Tear Gal. That makes sense. Um, we can't go to Dev at a uh, three mark two or whatever the hell that is. Um, I don't also think we can risk going here in case there are any ground forces we didn't detect. We'll probably go to this one here. Um, dab at B1 and then we'll just park up in orbit until we can clear the rest. So. Remove all. Auto route to... Uh, you can't auto route to Davit yet. We're still waiting on that to disappear. Because there's a threat from when we did the fighting. And that threat is blocking civilian traffic from going through. Unless we force them. It's just to kind of stop civilians just wandering into war zones. Okay, screw loose. Do me a favor. Pop through to Jedi. We're going to have a look through that unexplored jump point. Need more cargo vessels. I was hoping to, like, deal with mining this time around. Isaac, you are good. Oh, not really needed right now. Uh, we also need to go to Earth. And then... Retool for the Poke Maple. There we go. Uh, let's check our industry as well. Yeah, we can slow this down now. So let's go down to 50% and then push the greenfield up so we can actually get working on more terraforming. It'll take its time, you know, very, very long time, but we'll get used to it. Uh, how are we doing for fuel? 80 million. Okay, fuel's actually decent now. We might want to set up, like people are going to Zoe right now to dump off those uh, orbital habitats, but it's such a long way. Yeah, the Lielstrom is on the way there. It's still in the Strategist. It hasn't even made it to Tholius. Uh, admittedly, there is a very long route out of Sol, but damn. Maybe it would be better to actually, like, produce these nearer the location, like produce them in Sleepy Zoe or something. I don't know. Uh, in the meantime, was there like a Venusian world in Agent or somewhere? Or was it Idril? I remember seeing a Venusian world and being like, we could take advantage of that. Ah, yes. Really low availabilities though, but like everything. Yeah. And then Subject Delta had one. Which, again... Only Geranium, really. The Crundium is 0.1 availability, but good. Like, it's certainly, like, a good, you know, quantity of stuff. Um, Do we want to start investigating? It isn't that far away. That's the thing. Like, it's much closer. Yeah, I think we will set that up. And I think instead of putting you on loop, actually, we'll keep you on loop. But the Alistair, we're going to get you to do something. So uh, the exact world ID was subject Delta A1. Okay. Now, to do this, we are going to do what we did before. So we're going to um, go to orbital habitats. We can probably minimize static defenses. We don't need that. 
we will have a subfleet. Orbital Habitat. Um, this is Subject Delta. A. I, I've been doing it wrong the entire time. I've been putting like Subject Delta A1, whereas I know it's Subject Delta A1. Then we detach. And then we want to move you to subject delta C1. Oh. Subject delta. Oh. This is not in alphabetical order. It's in population order, but it doesn't show population, which makes it somewhat difficult. Uh, done. Okay. The Alistair. Produce anything in the meantime, you're going to be very annoying position, but whatever. Earth. Refuel. Fleet. Space station. Track to any ship. Auto route to subject delta. And then move to the orbital habitat. Release tractor ships into the fleet. Auto route back to Sol. And then you've got refuel at the top of your list anyway. Uh, and then we're going to say, instead of cycle, because I don't want this to do you know infinitely, we're going to say just do it four times. So in total five, and then we'll do a refuel at the end. Ah, I can do that in 114 days. Not when you're tugging something, mate. Not when you're tugging something. Meanwhile, how is the... Almost up to 300,000 here on day naval shipbuilding. This is going to be one hell of a big tug. And we just got 20 centimeter focal length. Working on better tracking. Okay. We found Solerius. Mm, okay. A lot of stuff going on there. Unfortunately, this one is really far out. I don't see any Lagrange points at a quick glance. Yeah, so like that doesn't have any Lagrange points, which kind of sucks. Gas giants just aren't big enough. So Lagrange points you only get on really big gas giants or on um, Super Jovians. So, <clears throat> sadly, it doesn't look like we'll ever get to that. Because how far out is that? 200 and, you know, almost 300 billion kilometers. Yeah, not happening, mate. Okay, well, firstly, we've hit the 300,000 ton amount on day naval shipbuilding. The tug yard is ready, which means I guess we're designing a tug. And secondly, there is a known connection from Yabu to Gum Forever. Interesting. Also, incredibly annoying. That's just really annoying. <laughs> um. Yes, I guess the easiest way would be to like put this over here or something. Temporarily, I mean, Gun Forever's still got more jump points, I guess. That's, that's annoying. That's just so annoying. Okay. Um, right. One thing we will do while we wait is we'll take the Horizon. I will say survey next three system locations and you need to get to like Gone Forever and Yabu. And go through these jump points. So we'll say gone, go, go, gone forever. That seems a pretty good location. Uh, there we go. You're still undergoing overhaul. Great. You told me a moment ago you were free. Liar. Right. Okay. Let's do this. We need to get ourselves a tug, which means Ta -da! ship optimizer. Okay, we're using magnetoplasma. Our efficiency is better now. Uh, engine boost is 
Fine. We don't really care too much about that. Commercial. 99. When towing a station of 5 million tons. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Desired tonnage. 300,000. Desired speed. At least 150. If not, you know, let's say 300. Desired range. 20 billion. Plenty. Look at that. So much available space. Honestly, though, we can kind of ignore this. I know that we just pulled this up. I'm pretty sure the result is going to be use max uh, power commercial engines, which, fun enough, we have. The data stellar engines are huge. Like, I mean, they are 5,000 tons, whatever. I meant, like, they are huge in terms of their market sales. Uh, where's our existing tug? This is definitely a new tug. This is a huge tug. But. It is kind of a continuation. We can't really upgrade from one to the other though, can we? Yeah, so I guess this is a new ship class. The Melody! You are a tug. Let's get to work. One thing to begin. We would like a... Tractor beam. Then... Engines. And I'm going to put them in batches of 20. Okay. How's 55 engines for you? Now, the one thing I'm using this for is the amount of fuel and what the range will give us. Because this is saying that four ultra-larges will give us a range of, like, 20 billion. Actually, it's saying it will give us a range of... Hmm? Okay, is that with or without the... Yeah, that must be without the towing. Interesting. Okay. So we're going to need maybe like four ultra larges, maybe five. So I'm going to put down five ultra larges. Yes. Okay, that will matches. And then we need to just slide off a little bit of extra power. We need to get this within, you know, 30, uh, 300,000 tons. So um, I guess we can slide off one of them and just fill it with um, 300,000. The range is good. The speed is ridiculous. Like, this is you know, 5.1 thousand. This is 7,200. Like, a lot more speed. Admittedly, it's three times the size. But the important thing is that when it's got a lot more mass attached, it'll still be going pretty damn fast. I don't know how fast it's going to be going, but it's going to go very quick. Like, I say very quick, you know, 400 maybe. Yeah, we're sort of talking a little bit north of this. In fact, this is saying, hey, use 53 engines. And I'm like, what if I use 54, mate? So I think we're good. It's going to be incredibly expensive. But the build time is actually not as large as I thought it would be. It is going to use, you know, 54 engines. So, like... That's a lot! But it's since it is mostly engine, uh, we can speed that up by, hey, Earth, you want to just spend everything building engines? Uh, so 57 plus 54, 101. Shipyards. Um, I think we will also, because these are going to be pretty hefty things, we're going to name them. And this is a G2. Definitely, like, this is the second generation. Then instead of Scandinavia, it's going to be Northwest Africa. Okay. Strangely enough, the fuel capacity is lower than the Alistair.
Ah, the range is actually a lot shorter, though. Okay, it's a third the range. That's fine. The only question is, like, is that really going to be enough range? Maybe we drop one engine. Just to get the extra range in. One, two... Three, no, these are 5,000 tons. What am I talking about? One, two. Um, no, let's go with the extra engine. We'll always, you know, just attach a tug if we need to. I mean, it would suck on the way back because the tug's going to just be dropped as we start speeding off into the distance, but whatever. Um, we can always just attach a tug. Right. Retool for the... Melody. Oh, and it's done instantly. Ah, uh, I guess we could start building you right now. You would take a long time to be built. I think we're just going to wait. Because it'll be faster for us to do the engines. Um, One thing we want to do actually now is pop in here. Grab the Alistair. Mark is obsolete. And the Alistair too... We might want to mark you as obsolete as well. For now, we'll leave it because, again, they do have a function. Okay. 15 engines versus 54 engines. Yeah, there's a bit of a difference there. I only just realized that we've had the Jagnus on pause this entire time. I've meant to be building these for so long, and they've been on pause. God damn it. How many years have they been paused? Like five? Ugh, we've needed more freighters for so long. I'm going to just file that under I'm an idiot and we're going to move on. Yay! And we got a heavy bombardment weapon and the Jagnaps. It's it's a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. Um, Yeah, that, that's, that sucks. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also order more Jagnus to be built because well, we need them, but also because we can use them to transport minerals back and forth from planets. Now we're getting a little bit more mineral production in the outer planets and something that we definitely want to keep following up on to make sure we don't run out of minerals at any point. So we'll go for cargo fleet. Use any components that we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know what? Let's just go ham for production. Ten of you. I'll attach you. I'll rename you. Sweet. So, um, oh, looking at the map, actually, there's a few things going on over here. Hello. Um, yeah, there's nowhere for you to go. Look, I'm just gonna have to do something the map later on. Getting this is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Or, you know, 59 of them. So. First things first. Kalika. We could do with sending a load of stuff to these comets to take advantage of these. Because, again, it's a really short chain. It's right next to Sol. We can just go in, grab the stuff, go out, do that repeatedly. Uh, likewise, there's stuff in Agent we might want to start touching on. Um, the question is, somewhere... Could do with mass drivers. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, we'll grab six mass drivers and take them over there. Calico, do you have one? You do not. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mass drivers. Earth! Load! Mass... Mass driver. There we go. Uh, maximum seven. We could just load ten and unload the rest. Yeah. Well, we'll do it the more efficient way. Load seven. Go to Calica. And then let's start doing the thing. So, unload, installation, mass driver. Oh. Unload. Let's try again. Uh, mass driver. Maximum items, one. Then we'll come back to Earth. And then, 
we're going to send out a whole bunch of uh, auto mines. And we're going to dump some auto mines all over Calica. Once the new jackknives are produced that we've just ordered, what we'll get those to do is we'll get those to set up trade routes. And we'll have trade routes going to Calica, trade routes going to Subject Delta, Agent, probably even like Hoyle. Just regular setups. And then we don't need to worry about them in future. Although, that said, now we're producing more Jagnos. Maybe we should upgrade the engine. I mean, it's it's a it's a sixth fuel boost. And they are very low fuel usage anyway. It's probably not worth the retool time. So, so we probably don't have to worry about too much. How are we doing on fuel reserves? 77 million. I assume that we are due a fuel visit. Oh, 2.5 million. No. Hmm, okay. I guess we've just been using a lot of fuel. I guess we just filled up the Jagnaps. So maybe that's it. Um, We also got our heavy bombardment weapon. And then you're not working on anything, which means... Ground combat. Formation construction rate. Keep speeding up the production of ground units. Thank you very much. And that'll be done February next year. So nice and quick. That means we can do the last thing that we've been planning, which is finishing off the command regiment stuff. So we're going to go grab a medium vehicle with light armor and we're going to give it heavy bombardment. Heavy bombardment. Now, heavy bombardment is able to, from any of your ranks, I believe, so the front and the middle and the back, fire at the enemy's first two ranks. There is long range bombardment, which I think is fires at any of the enemy's ranks, but I could be could be wrong. It's very, very exact and unfortunately doesn't say. So I tend to forget, but I know that heavy bombardment you can fire from the back rank. And we now need a name for our heavy bombardment. It's got Two heavy bombardment weapons. Light armor, because it's not really going to get shot, hopefully. Medium vehicle, and we need a name for it. What is it going to be? Um, Greek mythological heroes. You know what? Let's go with Psyche. Um, artillery. Vehicle. Because it's not really a tank with a light armor, so... Psyche artillery vehicle. Sure. Uh, don't tick avoid combat. Because it's still shooting at people, which means it needs to be able to get the bonus from being able to, you know, not be avoiding combat. Uh, if you hit avoid combat, then although it's going to be hard for people to shoot it, it won't be doing much with the bombardment weapon. Maybe it'll even be just racking more ruins and stuff that you want to keep. I don't know. But we're going to instant that out. Go to our formation template. And I believe the command regiment had some space left. And then... Psyche artillery vehicle. Okay, six. Let's try ten. Okay, ten we can get in there. Now, for RP reasons, we'll probably pad the rest out with a few troops. So we'll get some Praetorians. Six of them. There we go. Six Praetorians <laughs> for ten artillery vehicles. They're not very well protected, let's be honest. Um, we might want to just, for RP reasons, reduce that to just eight of them. And then Praetorians. Let's get like a couple of them with MGs, a couple with light anti-vehicle weapons, and then increase the number of Praetorians up to like 30. Uh, we can increase these numbers a bit further. Um, let's have a look. 33. Okay, there we go. 33 Praetorians, 4 Praetorians with machine guns, 4 Praetorians with LAVs, 8 Psyche artillery vehicles, we've got the 2 Achilles command vehicles, 130 hectare transports, and then for the army command unit. I'm not actually going to put any bombardment weapons in this one, just because I feel that, although, you know, 
it's going to be the back line. They're unlikely to do anything. I do feel that you probably are better role played by having Torrens with you. So, four LAVs. Let's go with eight machine guns. And, ooh, eight machine guns maybe is too many. Go six. And then we'll chuck in 10 Praetorians. Too many. Okay. Let's reduce the number of anti-vehicle weapons. Right. Nine Praetorians, six machine guns, three light vehicles, 150 Hector transports, and two Ares Command APCs. Sweet. You're good. So we want to build four command regiments and one command army. Don't pop over here. Um, and then we'll go, we would like command regiment. One, two, three, four. Command army, one. And I'm actually going to push the regiment up. Because... We're going to need them to do our assault against the enemy held plants in Davit. Even if we only go in, you know, with part of them. Um, everything else looks good. I will push the command army as well. As well. There we go. Great. Good job, everyone. This is the thing where we're going to call it for here. I've been at Erylisium. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you have. Go check out the Discord for the interaction stuff. Um, I believe our shipyards are building those. Wolf, because they're almost done. Yes, building engines ahead of time is so good. Just so good. Then we'll find out what we can get from those precursor ships. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really hoping they'll be something nice, because they seem to have some interesting stuff. Although, admittedly, most of that was the STOs that we blew up on the planet. Either way. Uh, like, subscribe if you want to. You can use the YouTube sub feed, although I'd recommend the Discord's announcement feed better. But until next time, stay shiny.